Let's do it. Good morning, Rick. Good try. Good morning. Good morning. Can't get me on. That's that's my trick. Yes, it is. Yeah. How long? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm really good. I'm uh, uh, yeah, feeling good. It, it feels great to feel good. I think I said that yesterday, and uh, but it is a true statement. And um, um, yeah, wow. Christmas is what is today? Today <laughs> is Monday. It's this week. It is this week. It is. Oh, it just snuck up, didn't it? Oh no. I know, but the snow, we got to have lots of snow. I'm saying bring it, brother. Blizzard of 78, you remember that? I did. I just saw a picture of it on Facebook, and I thought, let's do that again. Oh, my gosh. I mean, my kids have really never seen snow. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm talking, I mean, even without the blizzard, we used to have snow. I mean, we it's did. accumulating. Yes. Well, it. it normally started sometime in November yeah. when I was a kid. And you never saw the ground until March. Yeah, and then there was floods. Yes, yes. There'd be always water standing around. Anyway. Yeah. Sure enough. <laughs> hey, uh, just something really quick. I had mentioned that uh, I was going to be in Angola this weekend, uh, this past weekend. And uh, I was not able to uh, be there because we had several baptisms in Edgerton. So... Um, I apologize for that, but I'm going to get up to Angola soon. So I'm excited about going to Angola also, but yeah. Yeah. Yep. Young men wanting to get baptized. Yes. Yes. I'm excited about that. The, the one, a teenager, 19 had, uh, sent me a message and said, I need to get baptized as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's make it happen. Yeah. And we're getting a, a, a young a young guy. I well, I don't know how young. I've not met him. He's coming from South Carolina, and uh, or South or North Carolina, and uh, we're going to get to baptize him. So, yeah, good, yeah. good stuff, good stuff. All right, well, just a, just a reminder: uh, there we won't have any seven fourteen on Thursday and Friday, and then the next week Thursday and Friday. So. So yeah, just a reminder to everybody. Two three day weeks. Yep. 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 So. All right. Let's do it. Proverbs eleven. Yes. So it it might take us a while to get through Proverbs like it like it did Matthew, but maybe maybe not as long because Matthew, man, there was times we only did like two scriptures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you and I, I mean and this is a really good chapter. I I really really uh, uh, this is one of my favorite chapters in all of Proverbs. It just has some really really good stuff in it. So it does, and it just it continues to use uh, words like uh, wise and fool and and righteous, the righteous and and wicked. And uh, wow, just a yeah. I, I was thinking about this. And I thought, what if we what, what if we did a checklist? <laughs> I mean, wow. like personally, like if, if I read Proverbs and I would just, you know, write, you know, full or wise or something like that and just go through and that might be shocking. Yeah. I, um, I don't want to be in comparison with <laughs> anyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, well, not necessarily to be compared, but just to go take a hard look at our lives. And yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just interesting. So anyway, and again, how how the writer puts these, sometimes I read them like going, I'm not sure I get that. I, I'm, you know, yeah. so there's just there's a lot of study that could be done in the book of Proverbs for sure. Yes. All right. All right. You ready? You want me to read? Sure. Get my glasses ready. All right. I was supposed to have an eye appointment back before COVID, and I didn't get to go. I mean, it was like in March, and so you know I'm overdue. 
you know, a little fuzzy, huh? What happens? Your glasses wear out, I think. <laughs> yes, from you touching them all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not my eyesight's not getting worse. Anyway, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Lord detest. That's not a good word. I mean, yeah, the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. So, so my my version, um, the Lord hates, not a good word, cheating, but he delights in honesty. Wow. Um, I'm remembering my past and just going, whoa, whoa, cheating, 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 cheating been a lot of it in my life yeah well i mean not yeah yeah there was I'm just, yes. yeah. <laughs> you're you're uh confirming that yes no <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> um all right that's you know some of these are really it's like what do you what more do you say it's yeah. like yeah, exactly. it just, sometimes they just hit you in the gut anyway number two or verse two <laughs> when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Um, I, I don't know, we're kind of going one at a time here, but I, I just think about that. And, you know, First Peter 5, it, it, uh, which 510 is, is my life verse that tells what God will do. How, you know, he says that after you've suffered a little while, the God all our grace Will he himself restore, establish, confirm, uh, and strengthen you? But you have to go above that, and it talks it talks about humbling yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And, and you know, when, when we think we can do it on our own, it just doesn't work. But as it says, with humility comes wisdom. So when we humble ourselves and allow God to do work, that's where wisdom comes because you experience what God wants to do in, in our lives. And uh, I just, so many times we just get to that point where, you know, I, I can do this. I can make this through. Or, you know, it's not even that we decide that we, we just do it. And, yeah. and it's like, we, we wait until we're in a deep pit to, to get to that point where we do humble ourselves. You know, this, uh, this is where he wants us to live, uh, live a life of humility where uh, it's it's just looking to God and looking to the word. I mean, we're gaining wisdom every time we read one of these. Anytime you read the word, we're gaining wisdom. I, um, <clears throat> I absolutely uh, used to be very, very prideful. Absolutely. Because of scripture. I believe I have uh, become more, I'm still working on that, but become more and more humble as the years have gone on and, and really made an effort in, in that area of my life. Um, and it has done me well because scripture has changed me. And, uh, and because of the word, I mean, the word spoken, uh, preached and what have you, it, Humility is a good place to be. Yeah. So, so many times you'll see that he refers to the righteous, which we don't we don't become righteous on our own in our own doings. We can't become righteous. Um, right. We become righteous because of what Jesus has done. Amen. So you know, as I said earlier, what if we took and made this checklist um, through Proverbs? You know, if we wrote down you know, wicked and wise and, and just kind of like, oh, I struggle with that, oh, not bad, you know, where we can see our need for him. That, yeah, he has made us righteous, but still we, ha we have to um, realize that it's Christ that does these works in us. Um, you know, it, when, when God does a work in your life, there's things you just don't do anymore. But because of what he's done, he's made us righteous, which should uh, humble us. Because you can't do that on your own. You, you just don't do it. Can't happen. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. No, go ahead. You just gonna say something else? No, no, no. no. Good. I'm good. <clears throat> the integrity of the upright guides him, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their. Why well, I don't even know what that word is. Duplicity. What's it? What should you say? Uh, mine says uh, treacherous people are destroyed by their dishonesty. Good people are guided by their honesty. Treacherous people are destroyed by their dishonesty. Yeah, that's 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 pretty 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 plain <laughs> plain. Yeah, you know you get you have the living. Is that what you have? Yes, new living. Well, you really. That's good because it really there's sometimes in in mine in the NIV even that I'm like okay all right you kind of have to figure it out but yours really breaks it down yeah yeah it That's does good. all right four wealth is worthless in the day of wrath but righteousness delivers from death <laughs> you know all, all the money in the world is not going to do us any good when we face judgment. You know, there's there's not going to be any bribing going on, and uh, you know, it's, it's wealth is worthless in the day of wrath. On that day, man, all all the efforts we put into uh, to wealth, and again, wealth's not bad. Nothing against wealth. Uh, it's just it's not the answer to anything. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm just thinking um, the day of judgment. And just as you said, he doesn't need our money because he's, I mean, yeah. What do you say there? Yeah. I mean, he's God. And, uh, yeah. Reed, it is what it is. Let's do something. Let me, let me read it out of mine, then we'll read it out of yours, and then we'll talk about it. What's, what's right. you just, I'm interested in hearing what you're saying. All right. I like that. Uh, what? Riches. Yeah. Riches won't help you on the day of judgment, but right living is a safeguard against death. Yeah, and so, you know, talking about a spiritual death there. Yes. Yeah. You know, judgment here. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think um, our love for God, our obedience to Him, is the only thing that's going to count. It isn't here. 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 Give me. Here. I'll give you five bucks. No. 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 That that's going to mean for nothing. I'll give you five million bucks. No, it means nothing. Um, it's our right living. And it, as it says, our right living is a safeguard against death. And he's talking about a spiritual death, an eternal death. Um, yeah. But the day of judgment is going to come. Right. When, uh, you know, we've, we've used the rope many times. The, yeah. That, you know, uh, the last time I used it, I just talked about, that in this space we're living for this space for the eternity so what we do here we're, we're preparing for here and that's that's what you're saying that the way we live in today prepares us for that uh, you know a couple of weeks ago we talked about heaven and how our experience in heaven will be different for everybody i mean many times it talks about for what we did here on, on this earth how we live that yeah. life in that pink and well, I I want to say something here. I want to be, I think the right word is an advocate. The Christian life isn't a bad life. <laughs> Come on. It's pretty awesome, actually. And, I, I, and again, uh, you know, I, and I hate to say the wicked. I hate to describe a person that way or them, whatever that means. I get it. I get, I mean, they're doing this, they're doing that, but they're always looking over their shoulder. They're always wondering is, I mean, they've got a conscience in them just like anyone does. And, and I mean, not that we do things perfectly. I mean, there are things that I go, oh, what are you doing? Um, but the Christian life, just as it talks about here, the right living is a safeguard. It's a good life. It is a good life. And, and I don't know if someone is on today or will come across us at some point where they say, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I need to change or do this. And I'm saying the, the Christian life, a, a life with Jesus is a wonderful life. 
It really is. So there, get off my soapbox. <laughs> That's good. All right. <laughs> Verse five, the righteousness right. of the blameless makes their path straight, but the wickedness are brought down by their own wickedness. The godly are directed by their honesty. The wicked fall beneath their load of sin. Mm. You know, it, it said that by their own wickedness. And, you know, so many times when we fall into stuff, it, we want to blame somebody else. We don't, we don't like to take ownership that that was my, that was my stupidity. That was, you know, that was my wrongdoing. Um, you know, it's kind of like, Sometimes when we've when we've made a choice to do something wrong, we say we like to call it a mistake. Yes. And, you know, that that kind of takes the edge off of it. But what if we what if we called it a sin? That's like, oh, oh, you know, not no, don't don't give ourselves that leeway to go. Yeah, I made a mistake. No, we we sinned. And when we sin, we're sinning against God. And uh, so we have to understand that that those things are by our choice. We we decide. We make that decision. As if, and also flip side of that is we can make a decision that the righteousness of the blameless make their so it's making those right choices too makes our path straight. It, it brings us in. You know, he talks about that narrow road. It, our our righteous living living in a way that's blameless because we're righteous made righteous through through jesus yeah yeah i um uh, i'm looking at the two these two words uh in mind honesty and wicked and no matter where you fall you still you still know when you're doing right and when you're doing wrong whether you call it a mistake whether you call it sin um whether you're doing something good, uh, you, you know, you know, it's in you. You know, we just sometimes go, we, we turn our head to it and I'm just going to do whatever I want to do or, um, yeah, so, yeah. Yep. yep. Number six, verse six, <clears throat> the righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Mm -hmm. These, these several, last few are like the same thing, but this word is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Mine Basically, says, mine says the godly, the god, godliness of good people rescues them. The ambitious ambition of treacherous people traps them. Yeah. There's that word trap. Yeah. That we've seen that many times in Proverbs, just about the, the traps that are out there. Um, remember when we did that series called Trap? Yes, I re that was my that was my initial um You weren't even coming yet. No, I wasn't even part of life changing. No. And Brian asked me to come and give my testimony. I can remember that, and I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not coming and telling my sin to people I don't even know. But it was your is your testimony, man. That was your ex sin. That was yeah. that was behind you. Yeah. yeah. But we remember we just talked about all the different things um, that trap us. Yeah. So that's, the proverbs are going on and on. That just these things we get trapped. And, you know, we, we, when we justify ourselves, man, it's, a, it's just a trap. Yeah. So just a little bit about that, um, that initial time that I did decide to go ahead and give my testimony has um, reached a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. Uh, I remember that even right after that testimony, man, there were people reaching out to you. Yeah, there were. There were, yeah, a lot of people are trapped for sure, and even today. So, oh, oh, uh, right. would love to help help them out of that. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is kind of sidetrack, but uh, Gail and I were just talking about um, there's there's a lady who um, has has went through several miscarriages, 
-hmm. And so Gail's ministering to her, but what Gail's going to do is hook her up with a lady that had all had previously went through that. And, and, and now she can minister just like what you went through, you're able to minister to. And so God never wastes a hurt. God never wastes uh, the stuff that we've been through and then uh, get free from or, uh, you know, get victory over. Uh, so it, it's just, you, you look at that and go, you know, many times people are not sharing their testimony or reaching out to people who are going through those things. And man, God wants to use you. Yes. There's no one that can minister to somebody uh, like that more than you can that's been through it. And we are oh, trying to pair people up like, hey, this person's been through this. You need to talk to them. Yeah. So I, I'm just thinking of what Satan has meant to kill, steal, and destroy. I mean, he wants to destroy you because of that sin, because of what you've done. He wants to pile guilt on you and oh. and make you feel like a zero. And God says, wait a second, I want to use that. Let's Let's change this thing around. There are people that you can, just as you said, can help. They need to hear your story so that you can help them step along that way and walk out of that darkness. Yeah, it, it, it's so important. So, so important. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the scripture says you overcome by the blood of the lamb. That's what mm -hmm. Jesus has done for you. And the word of your testimony. Yep. We overcome by the word of our testimony, by, by talking to people about what we've been through. Yeah. We, we overcome. It didn't say they overcome. It says we we overcome. Yes. I tell you that every time I get to tell my story to somebody, it it fires me up again, because yep. uh, uh, it reflects of what God has done in my life, and is doing because of those you know those four words that He gave me th over three years ago now, it's still happening. You know, it wasn't like one day like boom, you're confirmed, established, restored, and uh, strengthened. You know. No, this has been an ongoing process um, from from the beginning of, of that of that time. Just and will continue. But every time I get to share that story, just like you, every time you get to share your story, it just it just reminds you of what God has done and builds you up. From where I was to where I am, but even more importantly, to where I'm going. Whew! Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I don't know. I, I how long we've been? Uh, twenty two, twenty three. But I, I definitely want to do the next verse. Okay. All right, seven. Is that where yep. we're at? Yep. Hopes placed in the mortals die with them. All the promises of their power comes to nothing. Mm. All right, read yours. Yes. Um, mine is very, very clear to me anyway. When the wicked die, their hopes all perish. Wow, that's heavy. Four. For they rely on their own feeble strength. And the reason I wanted to read this verse was uh, that's what LCC is all about. Life changing is all about. We're trying to reach people before this craziness happens, before it's too late, before they, yeah, it's dang, that's all I got to say. I'm, I'm sick about that verse. And, um, and I love it that our, our, our mission here is to reach people who don't know Jesus. I, I, I'm sold out, completely sold out about that. And uh, uh, want to do more. And COVID has kind of put the kibosh to that. And um, but not for long. I mean, Jesus is gonna make a way. He's and he is making a way. But this verse tears me up. But I'm so glad that. I'm involved in a, a family that is trying to reach the lost. Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, that's 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 a big deal. I mean, that's the plan of of Christ. That's what He commissioned us to do. And uh, you know, there there's I've never seen a widespread of hurt and worry and uh, people being scared like I have now. That you know, when when we come to the end of our own abilities you have to turn somewhere and yeah. so we need to make available christ an opportunity to turn towards jesus and uh, yeah our our methods have been limited but that can't stop us we have to think of new ways uh, how, how do we how do we do this where do we go what do we do um and that's uh, i'm not just meaning you and i i'm meaning those who are following christ uh yeah. this is not the time just to sit back um there was a lady that was just talking to me the other day she was she's she's just at the verge of depression because she's lonely uh she's not able to come to church she's not able to be around people and i said don't let yourself go into that hole you you can reach out to people there's all kinds of methods it it will bring life to you if, if you're reaching out to to others and uh you know that that's what has to happen in this time. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, the limitations that have been placed on us, I get those and I respect those. But as you said, there's never a better time than now. Wow. And so, I mean, people are coming out of the woodwork with the hurt and the pain and what do I do now? And all is lost and um yeah so yeah there's no time like the present um and once again um our mission our vision is to uh serve seekers people who are seeking the lord um they don't even know it sometimes and um i, I love it that we get to do that and uh, that that i'm part of part of that it's yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Nothing like leading somebody to Jesus. Oh boy. Whew. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. Everyone anybody can anybody can do it. It, it. it really isn't that hard. And and it starts with your story. Here's yeah. where I was. And I tell me your story and and then let's figure out where we're going to go from here. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're done, brother. You are. That's all there is. When did we get to seven? We did. We got through seven. All right. I'll that's pray the first. That's number. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, there it is. All right. Pray away, bro. Uh, Father, thank you for who you are and we acknowledge that you you are the the savior of this world and uh father that you are the answer that you you lord are the hope of this world and so lord we honor you as uh the resource of uh the need for pe of people today and uh, so father we just pray that you would uh, use us that you would use those who are uh, joining today that father that you would stir their hearts uh, to be the part of of someone else finding hope that uh, lord that we won't leave, let our limitations of contact um, to of reaching people that we would uh, we would seek you for ways and and uh, divine appointments to to reach out to people and uh, so father we uh, we just thank you today for the proverbs that uh, that challenge us, challenge us to take a, a hard look at our lives and, and see what areas we may be getting trapped in. Uh, that those traps will even keep us from uh, sharing Jesus with people. It will; those traps will will shut our mouths. So, Father, uh, do a work in us, Lord. Show us those those uh, blind spots in our lives through through the Word of God. And uh, so, Father, we we thank you for these verses today. Father, um, uh, just looking into scripture, into Proverbs, um, we've read some heavy stuff. 
But I want to say on the other end of that, it has been a joy talking about Jesus. Uh, thank you for scripture. Thank you for allowing us to, uh, to have a, a roadmap before us that we can grab a hold of and touch and read and learn from. Uh, Father, I just thank you so much for that. Father, I pray for uh, uh, America. I pray for uh, the people that live within this nation. I pray for the leadership of this nation, Lord God, that they would be followers of you, uh, true followers, Father God. And uh, I just thank you um, for what you're doing, not only here, but throughout the nations of this world, um, preparing us uh, for your son coming a second time and uh, allowing us to be part of that kingdom. So Father, we uh, uh, pray for every nation, every leader, and uh, ask Lord God that they would uh, once again just be followers of you. Lord, we praise you today and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, brother. All right, man. Have a great day, everybody. Yep. Thanks Bless for joining us. One and all. We'll see ya. See ya.